millimetre yeah. bow for shell. Ah. Now, do you know, interesting fact, what Napoleon would be called if he was hit by one of these? Nine. Napoleon blown apart. <laughs> Welcome to Sally Antiques, the program where we show you the interesting and unusual things that pass through our hands. Today we have uh, an interesting story that we filmed throughout a number of weeks and I hope you will enjoy it. And Ross will tell you everything about it. Hi Ross. Hi Ross. Hello everybody. Okay, well, uh, 20th century weaponry has developed at a runaway speed. Um, the improvements in production methods, materials, technology and development taken many huge leaps forward from the First World War onwards. Um, weaponry has often become obsolete in a short number of years due to emerging technology and countermeasures, uh, but not so much for our friend the AB Bofors 40mm anti-aircraft auto cannon, which buys these. Now it was developed by the Swedish arms manufacturer AB Bofors in the 1930s and this gun could fire 120 of these babies per minute. It was used extensively by the Allied forces as well as by the Germans who occasionally captured them um, and the Bofors was in regular combat use right up to the Persian Gulf War of 1990 to 1991. So um, a long and illustrious career this, this weapon had. Now our particular uh, Bofor gun was obtained from the Stratford Armouries one with a World War I and World War II Mark IX naval four and a half inch deck gun, which we will cover in another episode. Um, but this Bofa we're talking about is a 1954 Mark II, and it was actually being used by the Argentinians during the Falkland War. still there on the front of the pub, so if you want to come down and have a look at it, please, please do so, it'll be nice to see you. Um, now, the Bofa. The sea air, uh, age, and the wet conditions were starting to have a detrimental effect on the gun. So, fortunately, we managed to find a new home for it, with an enthusiast in Germany, who's going to restore it to a working, and maybe non-firing condition, um, and but, most important thing is it will be preserved for the future. Um, I would like to thank Wolfgang for his assistance with loading and transport and we look forward to the pictures and videos of the restored Bofa. Uh, we will of course update you when we receive these. Um, but it's been a pleasure dealing with it and now it's gone off to Germany. We look forward to seeing what's going to happen to it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much Ross. Uh, now we will present a few images and recordings that we've done through uh, the process of bringing the cannon, uh, uh, setting uh, the cannon in the uh, Jolly Sailor, uh, on Jolly Sailor port, and after that removing it, actually you'll see two videos with Ross, um, which he did in the day when the cannon went to its new home. Enjoy. See you next time.
So here we are with the Bofors, 1954 Mark II Bofor, loaded and ready to go on its journey to Germany to go into a private collection um, and uh, be restored and uh, uh, and get got working again, I believe, with regard to the tracking. I don't think it'll ever fire a shell again. A bit problematic, the move, as you can see, lorry it's on is a low loader uh, and they brought a uh, a forklift truck which was okay for lifting the wheels over however it did not it did not manage to do the job and get the cannon over the wall that you can see down here um, which is one on the other corner as well where it was stored so we have to get another crane in to lift it over that wall and get it onto the low loader here it's all ready to go now and it should be in germany by tonight uh, with its new owner with a bit of luck um, we're looking for something else to put on the uh, space it's left and uh, we'll we'll take our time and, and uh, see what we can find if you've got any ideas please let us know thank you and there goes the bofa gun on its way to germany not the first time we sent guns to germany but this time it's in peace bye bye bofa